In this video, you're going to learn about the five most useful methods of the Pandas library. So if you're struggling to understand how Pandas library works and how to utilize it for data science and data analysis, this video is for you. So here we go. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to be using the SPIDER IDE, which is part of Anaconda, and we're basically using this program because it's going to be easier for us to test our code as we go through it. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to use Pandas for the purpose of data analysis and data science. For this exercise, I have downloaded a video game sales data set, and we're just going to go ahead and do some functions uh, with the use of pandas library just so I can show you what you can do with a data set and how you can manipulate it before you actually start analyzing it. So let's go ahead and try to read this data set. So the data set looks like this. We have 11 columns and we have the rank, we have the name of the video game, the platform, the year it was released, genre and so on. And we have like some sales here the EU sales and global sales. So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and read with the use of pandas the data set. In case you don't have pandas installed on your computer, what you need to do is go on your command line and type pip install pandas. And that's just going to download the library and install it for you. And then you're going to be able to use it in your ID. I already have done that. So let's import pandas in our ID. And we do import pandas as PD. For this exercise, this is the only library we're going to use because we're just going to try to manipulate the data set with the use of the pandas library. So import pandas as PD, and now we're going to want to create a variable and I'm going to call it data equals. And now we do PD because we imported pandas as PD and read CSV parentheses. And what do we call our data set? It's called video game sales. That CSV. And this is how you basically read the CSV file. Now let's print it to make sure that everything is in order and we actually read it. So print data, run it. And you can see here on the right side that you we do have the 11 columns read. So everything is everything looks all right. But sometimes what you're going to want to do if you do data analysis or you're going to need to analyze this data set, uh, you're going to want to skip the header. And how you do that, you just go around here where you have read your data set and you do header equals none. And that is just going to make it easier for you to read the data set without having the names in the columns. All right, so now we have read the data set, but right now you can see you can't really do much with it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to print it again. So we're going to do print data.head. And that's just going to give you the first few rows of the data. If you run it, you can see here that it's a little easier to read. You have the name, you have the platform, the sales and the global sales. And you still have 11 columns so nothing really has changed. You just read the data in a different way. The next exercise we're going to want to do using pandas, a lot of the times you're going to need to rename your columns. And why do you do that? Well, most of the time the column names are not really intuitive and it's actually just going to help you understand the data better. So let's do that with the use of the pandas library. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a comment here and we're going to say rename column just so we know what we're doing. So here we have read the data and now we're going to rename a column of our choice. And we do the following way. So data equals data dot rename. Right now it's pretty intuitive. So we have firstly created our data frame, which is called data. And now we use the function rename on this data. So rename columns equals 
and now we open curly brackets. So data dot columns, because we're trying to rename one of the columns, one of the 11 columns we have. And here we do, let's do the first column. So rank, we're gonna actually name it game rank, just to make it easier for us to read when we're doing the analysis. So game rank, all right. And here we're gonna do in place equals false. Why I did in place false here is because I want to save the new data and the new renamed column in a new data frame. If you would have put in place is true, then you're just gonna rewrite the original data frame that you have. So for the sake of this exercise, I'm just gonna rename and recreate a new data frame. So let's print it out and see if it actually changed the name. So print data.head. Let's check it out. There we go, game rank, it did change. So we do have a name change over there. All right, now the third method you can do using the pandas library is the unique function. And that's gonna help you a lot when you do a lot of data analysis because you're gonna want to see from a lot of data on a column, what are your unique values. So what we're gonna do right now is create a new variable. And with that, we're gonna apply the unique function on the data set on a specific column. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. So let me just name this unique function. So the new variable would be unique values equals. Let's look at the data set. So what do we have here? We have the rank, we have name, platform, year, genre. Okay, let's do genre. We want to see what are the unique values in the genre column. So let me give it a better name, unique genre values. Remember, you always need to name your variables that are very, very intuitive because when you have a long and a big program that you're gonna deal with, you need to know what variables to look at. Instead of giving it a random name, what you can do is name it intuitively, name it after what you're doing right now. So right now we're trying to find out the unique genre values and I named our variable unique genre value. So it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. So unique genre of value is gonna be, it's gonna be data. So we take the data frame we have already created dot genre dot unique. All right, now let's print it out. Unique genre value, run it. And you can see here, we don't have that many genres. We have sports, we have platform, racing, role-playing, puzzle, shooter, simulation, and so on. So that is gonna come in very handy when you're actually doing your exploratory data analysis part. So let me just comment this and move on to the next method. Now the next method we're gonna look into is actually gonna be very useful when you're gonna do your exploratory data analysis. So a lot of the times when you have a very big data set with hundreds of columns, you're only gonna need a few of them at a time. So what we're gonna need to do right now is select from your data frame, just specific columns that we might need for this part of our analysis. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to select just specific columns from your data set. For this, I'm just gonna write here, selection of columns. All right, now let's create a new variable so that we don't confuse this one with the data frame we have previously created. So we're gonna call it new data and this data frame is only gonna contain three columns of our choice. So new data equals, we have the previous data frame, so data, and then we use brackets, double brackets, and I'm gonna tell you why. So double brackets, and then you do quotation marks. Let's look at the um, data set and see what uh, we want to choose. So I'm thinking we can choose a rank, genre and global sales from all of our 11 columns. So we're gonna do rank, genre and global sales, okay. All right, so this is how I actually chose 
three of our columns. What we needed to do is take the previous data frame we have created and then actually use the square bracket to name the columns we want to add to the new data frame, so the new data. So we chose the rank, the genre, and the global sales. Now let's print that out. Print new data dot head because I would just want to see a couple of the rows and you can see here we only have in our data frame three columns instead of 11 so for this part of the exercise and for this part of the analysis you can choose just these three because when you're working with big data you're going to really need to do this because during your analysis if you're going to try to take all the columns into consideration if you have a lot of them it's just going to overwhelm your computer so we don't want that we just want to keep it simple and straight to the point on what can solve your problem so this is one of the ways of selecting some columns you can also do it in different ways with iLock but I find this to be one of the most effective parts because with iLock you're going to need to use indexing and that sometimes for beginners especially is going to be a little bit confusing so if you just want to do the selection of columns you can just use it with the previous data frame and the name of the columns themselves within the brackets all right so for the last method for today we're actually gonna take a look and see how we can delete or drop some of the columns within our data set and as we said before this is going to be very important because when you're working with a big data set and you just want to remove a few one to a few columns of your data set you can use the drop method so let's go ahead and let me show you how to do that so what we're going to do right now is make a comment here and call it drop selected column. All right, now we're going to create a new variable and let's call it data dropped. Okay, so here we have created a new variable. Now we're doing data, the previous data frame we have created, dot drop parentheses. Now let's take a look at our data set and see what we could drop from here that would not really affect our analysis. So let's, let's drop the year, so the year it was published. So what we're going to do right now inside the parentheses, we're going to have quotation marks, year, and then we're going to do one. And why I wrote one here is because I want to drop the column year. If you did zero instead of one, that would just drop a row. So whenever you want to drop or remove a column, you do the name of the column inside parentheses and one after it. So this is how we drop the column from the data set. Now let's print data dropped. Run it. And you can see here that we have 10 columns instead of 11. So we actually did remove the year from our data set, which makes it easier for us to plug into a machine learning algorithm or even do exploratory data analysis without the column that we don't need. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you need more help on getting started on your own data set, I have a free download for you on my website, biancadata.com. I will leave a link right here. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.